How's it going everybody? My name's Kyle and this is the custom 3D printed impeller I built for the Seaflow 3,700 gallon per hour bilge pump. This is specific to this brand and model of pump. I have no idea how it would work in other pumps, but the tolerances have to be pretty specific to this design. The reason I built this is making a little subsurface 12 volt gold dredge that runs off this pump. And I did a whole series of tests as to what nozzle size was the best. 15 millimeters worked best with the stock impeller as well as with my impeller. But at that 15 millimeter jet size with the stock open faced impeller, I was getting 3.5 PSI. And with my closed faced impeller, I was able to get 4.4 PSI. I forget exactly, but at one point I worked out the suction and you get about a 20% increase in suction without like over amping this pump or anything. So it seems pretty worth it if, if you want it, but the whole system will work with the stock impeller. This is just if you want that little bit of a bonus. I believe the way it's able to achieve that is this being open face versus this with the shroud, like a closed face. Um, when running wide open, just an open hose, you don't really get a ton of extra power with my impeller. They're roughly equal. But as you start to add resistance to the line, water starts to sort of recirculate up this gap at the top of these blades. So you have a low pressure in the middle, high pressure out here. The high pressure water tries to you know go out your jet, but also returns up this gap and back to the middle and sort of circulates around here. And that creates an inefficiency. Now, when you add a shroud, the water still can come up and over around this shroud, but it's a sort of a tight fit against the housing at the, the two points here. So you get less of that recirculating and more of your energy just goes to pushing water, which is I think why we get that increase. Now, in order to print this, it's a little bit tricky. So for now, excuse me, for now, I'm just selling this as a physical file or a physical thing, not as the file. Uh, it works out because it's small. I can stick it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, send it out to you. It's pretty simple. And you do need uh, an advanced printer to do this, something capable of multi-filament printing. The reason is in order to get this to work in this housing, I actually have to drop the outside down a little bit. And so to do that, it starts in printing out of this filament, which is ASA. And then when it gets to this layer, it actually swaps over and prints in a different filament that doesn't stick to this makes a layer and then it prints on top of that filament. If you don't do that, you can't separate the support layer from this in a nice, clean, smooth fashion. Also with the shroud on the inside where the water goes, it's this nice rounded curve. And on the outside, I've got a flat layer here where it raises up, so it prints upside down, does that filament switch. And so not everyone has a printer capable of doing that. The other thing is this being printed out of ASA, just think, like a UV proof version of high impact ABS. Um, it shrinks slightly when you print it. So I originally started with a plastic called PLA and it's not very temperature resistant. So the shaft in here, if you run it dry, just rubbing against the rubber seal, it creates some heat and actually gets too hot to touch. And I'm concerned that a PLA impeller that gets run dry, it would be too soft. It might loosen up that connection and it would you know, wreck your trip. So I went with a more heat resistant plastic to actually produce this, but the profile for the PLA actually was a different size. I had to change the size for the shaft for the ASA to make it fit. So each individual filament requires a different model just to make sure that it actually fits precisely. This is held on by six of these screws. It's a number two Phillips head screwdriver is what you need. I'm just gonna quickly pop off the final two screws here and show you how to swap out the impeller. These are nice and loose for me because I've done this, I don't know, maybe not hundreds of times, but lots of times. Pop this off here. Now, there's three parts here. The easiest way to do this is to flip it upside down and you just remove this outer housing. If you um, ignore these, these are just a, a float mount I was doing for part of the gold dredge project. This is your impeller at the top. This and this are two separate components. Your motor sits inside here and you just have to make sure that this, uh, the hole there and there is lined up before you put everything back together. At the top, there's a little C-clip on the shaft. And to take that off, I use a, a pair of needle nose pliers like this. And you take one part of the plier and you set it 
on top of the clip, but against the shaft. And then the other end, you can press up against that C-clip and you just sort of pop it off. It might go flying, so make sure you don't lose it. You got your C-clip right there. And this just pops right off like that. Your stock impeller that you're gonna find on here, it sits on C-clips on there. So you would remove your stock impeller, set it down. You would get your utmost outdoors impeller, slide that on. You can grab your C-clip either on a flat surface, hold on to it like this to so set it into place, or you can do that with your finger, but you place it with the flat away from the clip, come in from the rounded side, and once it's just sort of snug and in there, you take your pliers against the shaft, against the top of the C-clip, and just clip it into place, and now you're locked into place. So with that in place, I'm just gonna check that these holes are lined up from this wire facing away, set this on top like so, it sort of locks into place. And then you just tip the thing upright and I can confirm everything's lined up with those holes. You can just set these in and gain number two Phillips head screwdriver. Just snug these things up. There's an O-ring in there, so you wanna make sure it's nice and even before you get too uh, torquey on it. And then once they're all in, you just go around and just snug everything up. And now you're back together. Um, to assemble these, basically, I built a little jig here. I'll just show you real quick. This is a flat enough profile that this doesn't just like automatically center on the top. And so rather than trying to get it perfect by hand, I built this little ring with some flexi bits. So you just take the impeller, set it in there, get everything pressed down flat, and you use some CA glue, run it along the top of all the impeller blades, and then you take your shroud here, press that on top. This has a little rim that goes and presses down on the outside there, so you just set that on top, and then take your favorite cranberry juice. Uh, I'm pretty sure that apple juice wouldn't work. You gotta be a cranberry juice for this. Set that on top as it dries, and that's how I assemble these. For now, these are gonna be physical products only. Because they're so thin and light, I can just stick these into like a letter, essentially, put some stamps on there, just be able to ship this out to you fairly efficiently. Um, perhaps at some point I will have a physical file for this setup, but like I said, depending on the filament, it actually takes a different file. And until I sort out what, you know, is required for carbon fiber nylon to fit perfectly, this is just a physical file. You can order from utmostoutdoors.com if you want that roughly 20% boost in efficiency for your subsurface gold dredge. That's all I got for you. Cheers, everybody, and thank you for watching. Ooh, gold mining equipment. Oh, what's this? Oh, a high banker. Better click that. Currently sold out. Oh, no. I better... I better get a flight to Canada quickly and uh, build more of these things. Wow, that thing looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's actually been a while since I've looked at my website here, but uh, yeah, we'll get more of these built soon. <laughs>